Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is Randy back at you again, and this is my mini-series. This is the account I have been working on for quite some time now, and that's going to be an experimental No Overhead Inferno account that I will attempt to get a No Overhead Prayer Inferno on eventually. We're coming close to our actual attempts here, but today's episode is going to focus on me completing Master Quest with no overheads because once again this account does not have overhead prayers, and is 31 prayer. When we last saw this account, I had just gotten some more strength bonus, I had gotten a rune defender, as well as two no prayer fire capes, and I sacrificed one to get into the inferno. But my stats were really lacking. I had a lot of ammonite crap AFK to do, so that's what I did. While working on my defense peer grind, which I have been doing for 8 months solid of being online almost 10 hours a day, every single day, I managed to get some AFK in in order to train my stats up and hit 99 everything across the board besides of course 40 defense and 31 prayer when it comes to these combat stats. I managed to get 99 strength first at Ammonite Crabs, then 99 attack, then I got 99 range once again through Ammonite Crabs, and lastly I got 99 magic by using 1x1 one one NPCs and AFK and NMZ with absorption potions. And because the task is so difficult on my defense peer for what I'm currently doing, I was full on AFK, I didn't even clump some NPCs properly, and wasted a lot of runes. But luckily we got a lot of GP access from Mauler's Bank, and therefore everything you see in today's video, I'll be having some amazing gear to do with. Lastly, about two episodes back in this mini-series, I completed Sins of the Father with terrible, terrible melee stats, so that quest won't be included in the master quest for today's video, but I plan on doing every single master quest I possibly can with no overheads and only 40 defense. A lot of this is super casual gameplay, and honestly, my content lately is not what I really want it to be. It's, it's nice, but it's not up to par with my expectations. I'm kind of a perfectionist here, and honestly, this grind is so long in the defense pier, and even this grind just to get to Inferno on this account is taking quite some time, so I apologize for that. I want to bring you guys some really unique, awesome content, but it just takes so long in this game for what my plans currently are. RuneScape is such a grindy game, and even spending around 10 to 12 hours a day trying to get where I want to with these videos, this is all I could come up with in this short amount of time. So I'm a little bit demotivated with this video, but I'll try and make it as good as I possibly can. As well, I think I'm going to go dark for a few months after this video unless something amazing comes up. I plan to not actually release my next video until it's something I could be really, really proud of. So yeah, I know, no overhead master quest sounds insane, but honestly, a lot of this I just went in blindly and managed to do it because my gear was so amazing. But you'll get to see the process and progress of this account, which is basically what I wanted to showcase in today's video. But first, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor for today's video, Ridge. Ridge has sponsored me for a few videos now and they've sent me a lot of their products and honestly I use these every day. This is their Ridge wallet, I store all my cards in this and I can easily just push them out and sort through them one by one, pick out what card I'm going to use and it's a very minimalist but functional wallet that has a very sleek design and I can use pretty much anywhere. So along with the Ridge wallet I also use the Ridge key case daily, I'm able to just flip through my keys. There's also over 30 different unique styles and colors to these and I got matching ones, I got the burnt titanium, so these are very stylish, very sleek, very lightweight. I like just the minimalistic approach to this because it's just very very easy to carry these on me every single day and compared to my old wallet and my old clunky keychain these are just much more sleek much more easy to use so the durable material of this wallet as well means it comes with a lifetime warranty and it's the only wallet you'll ever need so what are you waiting for get the best offer you can by using my link ridge.com forward slash rindy and right now you can save up to 40 percent until december 22nd so here we are, the first quest I wanted to complete was Enlightened Journey, and that's because Monkey Madness 2 apparently is going to become available for this account. Originally, I could not do that quest because actually talking to King Narnode would just lead me into taking the Monkey Madness training, which this account has not taken. It was able to skip that training, and it went a little bit of an unethical route into Barrow's Gloves. But apparently, Jekex soon is going to be making it to where Monkey Madness 2 will be completable on an account such as this. Therefore, that quest will hopefully be in today's video towards the end after that update has been made. And as well, I just needed the farming XP and the easy access to the tree patch right here by the hot air balloon as I'm going to be doing farm runs because I will need 70 farming for Song of the Elves. And speaking of 70 farming, I need to go ahead and start skilling because there is a lot of base 70 stats for all of these quests here to come. So since this is a normal account, not an Iron Man, Herblore was one of the easiest skills to get to level 70 and that's what I got first. I missed the clip though, so here's the Ruin Light screenshot. 
I managed to get, yes, 70 herb lore right off the bat. Another easy but click intensive skill I needed to get to 70 is that of construction. So I decided to go ahead and do that. And once I'm actually able to build past these oak larders, I plan on moving to mahogany tables. And then this will be even quicker than before. And I can honestly get 70 in just a couple of hours. I went ahead and manually unlocked the taverly route with the hot air balloon system. So I'll be using the ring of elements earth altar teleport in order to access that. But this is what my typical farming route looks like. I'm doing farming the whole time while getting these other skills up that I'll need because once again, I need 70 farming for Song of the Elves. Luckily though, once again, this is a normal account. Therefore, I can just buy all the trees and payments out of the GE. And it is so much quicker than I would have experienced on my hardcore defense pier, for instance. This is amazing just playing the game normally for once. It's very relaxing. Now, for all of 99 Strength and part of 99 Attack, I did collect a lot of the fossils off the island in Fossil Island because I knew that you could redeem these for some form of XP, and I have not hardly trained any agility normally other than through lamps on this account, so I hate agility as a skill. I therefore wanted to get these fossils for the specific tasks of avoiding running laps, and that's because I'm going to need 70 agility for Song of the Elves. And these fossils, I think, will get me to at least 65, maybe 66 from my current level. Okay, we actually only made it to 64, but are extremely close to 65 agility after all the fossils have been turned in. Everything is completed entirely in this room. I'm such a noob at actually playing this game normally that I was smithing plate bodies in Port Gazard for smithing XP. No one had told me that you could do this goldsmithing method here in Blast Furnace for literally like 250k XP an hour minimum. I'm getting so much more XP and 70 smithing, which I thought was going to be one hell of a grind, looks somewhat achievable now. And honestly, I'm getting used to this skilling mindset of everything being way more easy than I remember. And here we go, just after a few hours, 70 smithing has already been achieved. We just have a few more 70s to get. I almost said 99s. Thank God, there's no 99s I need to get other than melee stats and range and mage. I'm taking a quick break from skilling here. Well, not really. I'm still getting farming XP, but we're getting 100% Hosidious Favor. That's because one, I need Hosidious Favor as well as every other favor to be 100% for a kingdom divided because I need thralls. Thralls come from that quest and thralls are necessary for the no overhead method I previously planned and put in the first video on this mini series. And as well, I need Hosidious Favor because I was going to go to the woodcutting guild in order to AFK chop some yew trees while I work on editing this next trash man video here and I can get some passive woodcutting XP. I might also do some mining in Motherload Mine and try and AFK that a bit because I do need close to 70 mining or somewhere around there. Can't quite remember right now but I do need mining as well, and that can be done kind of AFK for the most part. All right, finally getting 70 construction. We came back to this field, gave it a little break because it's just so click intensive, but I know my gear looks ridiculous. I'm in like over a bill of gear. Thanks, Mauler, by the way, but there it is. 70 construction, another 70 stat down. Another skill I've been dreading to train here is Hunter, and that's because my Hunter level is so low. These low levels of Hunter are so very slow and I'm actually using hunter potions to set up an extra trap here and as well I'll be using hunter potions then to move on from method to method because let's just say they're very cheap very easy to get on a normal account like this just buy them straight out of the GE and I can go from method to method much quicker and avoid some of these slower methods at these lower tier levels another quick note here I brought my blisterwood flail I thought it would protect me from gas kind of like the earlier blessed silver sickle and the pairing of Andis flail does but this thing does not, unfortunately. I did bring a backup though, being an HP cape and a regen here. And those seem to be good enough because they regen my HP so quickly and I hit, get hit by gas so infrequently that I can easily just stay here. And yeah, I have a feeling that this HP cape and regen will come more in handy for the desert heat that I'll be facing next because I just realized I don't have Dream Mentor done. I really don't want to do it yet. And I don't have the ability to use Humidify on water skins quite yet because of that. I did just a few levels at the lowest tier falconry while hunter potting up, but now we're in the desert and we're able to set three traps still out here. I am actually able to tank the damage entirely. I keep going back up to 99 hit points out here with just my HP cape and my region on, as well as having these desert robes on. Now, I think if I took the desert robes off, it would increase the interval of the hits if I'm not mistaken, and therefore possibly I could not out heal the heat. But with these robes on, it, it does work. You can tank the heat. We've moved up in the world. We're now at Red Salamanders, just one more tier, the Black Salamanders, and we'll finally be on our way to 70 Hunter. 
I can't wait for this skill to be over with. I really am disliking the skilling grind right now. Here we go, 70 Hunter. I just missed the clip again, but trust me, I got it. We got 70 Hunter, and now we can move on to probably yet another skill. By the way, there's Hunter requirements and all these other skill requirements in Quest all along the way, even in the Western Province Diary, the hard version of the diary, which I'll be needing to do for a Crystal Halberd. A lot of these quests share some of the same skilling requirements, others don't. I'm basically going to be doing as many skills as possible because I need skills for all kinds of quests, not just Song of the Elves. Right now I've switched over to Agility. This is my last major skill I'll need to be training, I believe, I think so. Now I'm almost 65 Agility right now, so I am running the Sears course. This would be much better XP per hour if I was able to run the Sears course all the way to 70 by using the Sears Village Teleport. Unfortunately, I cannot do that diary because I cannot do King's Ransom because that requires defense as well as Holy Grail gives per XP, which I can't do because once again, I'm on a no overhead account here. So we're going to be switching to Paul Navich at 65 agility and I'll be eating a summer pie for that course over and over and over again and banking for more summer pies in order to boost to 70 and actually start that course as it's around 4k XP per hour more if I do that method versus run all the way back to the start of Sears Village. Here we go finally 70 agility the worst skill this has taken me about two days on and off and probably six hours to get 65 to 70 agility the worst skill ever. Hopefully I'll never have to get agility again, and yes, I could have done Sepulchre, but apparently that was less XP per hour at this low level than Paul Vanich. But here we are, 70 agility completed. I couldn't really edit and successfully chop use at the same time, I was just, it was too slow of XP, I was missing out on so many wood chops, even as much with an AF cable thing such as wood cutting. So here we are, we're going to have to two tick teak trees in order to get 70 wood cutting now. While setting up the birds for this two tick teak method, god that's a tongue twister, I've realized something, I think I might have found another manip. Look at this. If I cast one of these curses on one of these birds here, only one of them hits me, meaning it acts as a flinch. Obviously I messed up there because I didn't wait for my HP bar to go away and it was still in combat with me, but this is like a flinch. This is exactly what I was looking for in the Inferno. Something that doesn't need a splash. I could possibly just wear any gear I wanted to as long as I didn't often hit those curses. No, for real though, this is huge. This means I possibly don't have to actually bring negative 65 magic bonus into the Inferno and that saves a lot of inventory. That's because now I don't have to splash in order for an instant projectile. I can just use weaken, curse, confuse, all of that. These NPCs will be fighting to have some decent magic defense bonus and I'll still be somewhat negative. So I really don't think I'll ever actually hit these curses, these confuse spells, these weakened spells often. And this is going to be a brand new plan. Hopefully that will work out for me in the Inferno in the long run. Okay, I haven't streamed in like eight months and I barely ever stream. Here's what happens the one day for three hours I decide to stream. What the fuck? Whoever wished this on me, I hate you. Whoever wished this on me, I hate you. I said if I get a beaver on this like account, I'm actually going to be pissed off. Cause someone's like, oh, I hope I pray for you to get a beaver. This is the most useless shit account ever, dude. And I got a fucking beaver on. I'm not even like, what is this? 65, 65 wood. This is the only pet I've ever gotten in this game. And it's some shitty ass beaver on this account, man. Ah, uh, okay. Well, cool. I got a pet for once. All right. It's time for another farm run. Luckily the last farm run ever on this account, actually. So it's time for my last farm run. 70 farming right there. There we go, that's the requirement for Song of the Elves, and I'll never have to do farming on this account ever again and buy useless trees out of the GE. So we did it, we got 70 wood cutting after doing some two tick teaks. And fuck, another tongue twister there. But we got it, I'm gonna go ahead and head out. I missed the clip, obviously, where I got the actual wood cutting level again. Okay, so I'm looking at achievement diaries. I used that little manip to get my Barrow's Gloves at 35 defense, and then I trained from 35 to 40 using defense quests like a Soul's Bane. A Soul's Bane gives just a little bit of defense XP, but I've done it, and that means I can get Varrock Plate Body 2 in order to work on the last skill I believe I need for a very long time on this account being 70 mining. So we're gonna get that Varrock Plate Body 2 as quick as possible, then move on to try our hand at 3 tick mining, another thing I've never done in my life. All of this is new to me. So you know what actually sucks is I realized I'm probably gonna have to set an authenticator. Yeah, I'm gonna have to log off, go set an authenticator in order to do Varrock Achievement Medium Diaries. That's so weird, but I'll be right back. I've AFK'd mining to about 66 at Motherlode Mine, but this method right here is still pretty slow even while 3 ticking. I'm getting about 60k XP an hour, 
because we're such low mining right now, even while three ticking. But if I wasn't three ticking, I'd be getting like 35k XP an hour. My hands are dying. I don't know how people do this to 99, much less 200 mil. It's actually insane. Props to you guys out there. I could never do this. I am actually losing my mind. So I think I'm going to AFK the rest of this mining level just because I'm so lazy. And I'm going to just mine normally here at Granite. And yes, my HP cape and my region does out heal the desert damage somehow even with this Varrock plate body on but barely sometimes i'll get down to like the 70 hp threshold then i'll eventually go back up to 99. all right i've been lazy mining pretty much since i discovered three tick mining just because it's so bad but here we go this should be at 70 mining that i believe is our last skilling requirement never mind it looks like for crystal halberd which i'll need for the inferno and my method i'm going to be using there I need 75 thieving for the hard diary in the western province area. I did not know this. I don't know how this totally slipped my mind or my eyesight. But yeah, I'm only 59 thieving right now. So this is going to be a little bit of a problem. I don't know what I'm going to do. Never mind. I know exactly what I'm going to do. There was an update today that allowed you to get extra quest XP for master and elite tier quest. Legend Skilled has a lot of thieving XP in here that I'm missing out on. So I'm going to talk to Radimus here and get some more thieving but i'll still not be able to get to 75 so i was starting mornings in part one and i accidentally held down space too long and uh, actually bought a crystal shield somehow that's a bit unfortunate but uh yeah we're doing questing now i need mornings in part one and part two for song of the elves that's the only two requirements i'm missing to do that quest and that's the one i decided to do first people wonder why it's so hard to attract new players to this game and just look at this I'm literally clicking these fucked up arrows in this disgusting interface that looks like it was made in 1996. I think that might be a reason. Just, there's so many like weird UIs in this game that people would just be like, what the fuck is this in 2022? And that is definitely one of them. Okay, this should be Mornings End Part 1 completed and we got some HP XP and some thieving XP. So we're still getting up to 70 thieving through some of these quest rewards. Oh yeah, and another reason I didn't do like Dragon Slayer 2 first is because I don't even have 200 quest points yet. I'm actually at 189 and I think doing all these quests will get me to exactly 200. All right, we're heading into the dreaded Mornings End Part 2 quest. I wanna see if this quest is a lot easier than I remember now that we have quest helper and it's going to tell us everywhere to run. I'm sure it will be. I actually am not draining this quest as much just because of that plugin on Ruin Light. As well, we've got an inventory set up here with a bunch of brews and staminas. I want to see if it's actually enough to bring us through the whole quest in one inventory. I don't know. I feel like I'll be cutting it close, but I also have my region bracelet and my HP cape to heal 4 HP every minute, so maybe that'll help a little bit. Yeah, until they start hitting 13s on me, it takes 3 hits. <laughs> oh no, dude! <laughs> I'm literally brewed all the way down right now. I'm going to try and pipe spec like a three just to get some HP back on one of these shades real quick. Oh no. Okay. This is the last step though. We've got 20 HP. I don't think there's any way I'm going to die here. And yeah, we're going to make it to the death altar and actually complete the quest with no brews left at all in the inventory and 20 HP. Nice. I actually had to go back for the black crystal and got hit down to 14 HP, but we still lived and 60k agility XP. I'm a blaring idiot because I could have not wasted as much time training agility to 70 earlier. I forgot that these quests actually give agility XP. Before I go straight into the master quest line, I figured I might as well just complete all the other pre-quests and well, Watchtower was one of them. This is a very easy quest to complete, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. As well, I'm going to do Dream Mentor here because that's required for Dragon Slayer 2. And then that should be all the prereq quests out of the way for all of the master quests I'm going to be doing. All right, so here we're finally doing Dream Mentor quest. This is the part where I have to get this guy's health and stats up. And the problem with this part of the quest is you actually have to use all different types of food on this guy. And I think it's up to like 27 different types of food. But you can actually rotate between three different foods and go back to the first one. So what I'm doing here to save inventory space is I'm basically just removing one of each out of the sack then alternating after the third one back to the first. And yeah, I get to save a lot of inventory. That is if I don't eat the onion on accident right there. So I don't think this boss will be hard. I've never done this quest in my 15 plus year history of playing this game, 17 plus year history actually. Jeez, I've been playing this game too long. Anyways, yeah, I don't think I can even put protect on anyways. He disables prayers and uh, I don't know how hard or how difficult this boss was supposed to be, but I'm pretty much slaughtering this thing and I don't think it'll be an issue with this uh, master gear I have on being Masori and Blowpipe. I think this will be a breeze. Alright, so yeah, as expected, I've just 
absolutely destroyed all forms of this boss without a problem. We still have over half an inventory of food left. All right, we're finishing up Dream Mentor now. This quest actually is extremely handy for what I'm going to be attempting inside the Inferno. And that is, I'll be using Spellbook Swap almost every single wave. And this is a quest that unlocks that spell at 96 magic with the correct runes. So, yeah, looking forward to being able to use that. And we got some mage and some HP XP. Definitely needed that. It's not like I'm already 99 in both of those. But, uh... Thank you for that easy Dream Mentor completion. I did not think that quest would be that easy to actually complete. All right, we're finally on Song of the Elves. Now, I'm kind of familiar with this quest. On the day of release, I actually did this at the lowest combat possible. Actually, I think you could go one lower, and still no one, though, has for some reason uh, tried to do that. It's still, what is it, three years later? Along the way of that route, I eventually did end up getting Prayer for Serene. So the only thing that's going to be different is Serene at the end there. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Serene, Seren, who cares? Anyways, the only thing that's going to be different at the end of this quest is her because I'm going to be doing that part without prayer, whereas before I got prayer up at the very end. But I am familiar with all the other bosses in this quest without prayer. This won't be as difficult as the other quests I'm going to be doing just because of my familiarity with it. But it'll be interesting nonetheless, and let's see what happens. I really don't remember this guy being so tanky. I don't remember how I even did this on my uh, low level. I might have just recoiled the whole thing and ticked it. I can't remember a lot of even his mechanics other than to avoid the fire arrows he blasts on the floor like that. And uh, yeah, he is pretty tanky though and this fight has taken me a lot longer than I expected it to being like the first boss in the side of this quest and I think this is the part where he like throws an arrow really quickly at you and yeah makes it look like you're gonna die but you actually don't which freaked me out the first time around doing this quest so here we are we completed the first boss in Song of the Elves so this is actually my third try I used a burst spells blood burst instead of barrage and i was getting my ass handed to me but now that i'm using barrage i'm healing a lot even when i take aggro from literally every npc i just have to clump them properly and make sure i tag them off the barrier this should be easy though the barrier is like over not over but close to half health and there's less than a minute left i think you start off with three minutes as well i've got a region bracelet and my hp cape on once again this combo of just health regeneration is amazing for a lot of things I'm doing on this account without prayer so that's how I'm surviving without prayer in this instance and how I'm trying to keep all these NPCs off at the same time two seconds left and I've used literally like three pieces of food <laughs> this was a much better attempt than the last few times I've done this somehow that that barrage was just so much better than burst I went through whole inventories of food before here but now we have another boss to kill and this boss would be pretty much impossible to kill without prayer unless you do this method I'll show you here in a second of melee flinching. So I teleported out right away because starting this from the actual battle point whenever you return is much easier to get this NPC into the flinch spot. Basically you just pull him here then go south, east, and bam, voila, he is now in the flinch spot and I can flinch this entire fight. He'll never do those 50 plus damage hits on me which are very almost impossible to um, out DPS whenever you're just face tanking him with no overheads on. This fight though now should be super easy. This should be it, he should be dead. He's at five health here and six health actually. Okay, we got him. And now all we have left for this master quest being Song of the Elves is the Seren fight. I think I found out I was calling it wrong earlier. Serene, it's actually Seren, FYI. Actually, I don't know if that's correct too. So just call it whatever you want. Be like me, just pronunciate everything poorly. So what's the plan, Stan? Well, Seren definitely is not going to be an easy fight. It's going to be one of the hardest quest bosses I'll have to take on. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is using a Minifight Remedy and a lot of bruise, as well as using some Blood Spells, Blood Barrage, and a Sanguinesti Staff. I'm just going to be trying to heal myself as much as possible between the areas of her nearly max hitting my HP. I think this will actually be more inventory efficient than using the method I discovered on the first day, being the Zamorak Brew into the Phoenix Necklace in order to save inventory. Now with the Minifite Remedy, this is just better because I'm using Brews and Brews heal a lot of my HP at 99. I don't have to waste a lot of my inventory slots with Restores because the Remedy actually makes it to where you get 6 plus 16% of your combat stats back every Every 15 seconds so it kind of negates out the bruise and I can switch to sanguine ST staff whenever I'm lower than 92 magic being the requirement for blood barrage and then I'll switch back to blood barrage every time that minifight remedy actually kicks in past 92 magic and I won't have to waste a lot of inventory on restores now I will be still taking some just for my prayer for my little 
mystic might whatever this is the lower tier magic prayer and yeah that's the plan let's see how it goes let's see if i can first try this and get this boss out of the way of the master quest line so as you can see i'm brewing practically between almost every hit because she does do a lot of damage without protect on she can hit up to i think 14 14 from a distance and that's 28 damage very rapidly in succession so i'm brewing a lot but luckily those minifight remedies are coming in handy and they're pushing my stats back up without having to restore and waste more inventory slots and as well i can sanguinesti even if i'm brewing like all the way down to 60 and it still hits quite a bit the caps on my magic hits are active, being 24 on Serene, so it's kind of unfortunate, but we have a lot of magic accuracy, and no, I do not have a magic imbued cape yet on this account, I'm using still a Majorino 1 cape. As you can see, every now and then I'll accidentally staff bash this guy as well, because my mage will go down so low, and I'm trying to alternate between using uh, auto cast from Blood Barrage and using the Sanguinesti staff. If I can, I will Blood Barrage because it, it heals more than a Sanguinesti staff does. Okay, so I have to kill Serene on this cycle. Almost said Serene. I'm running out of bruise. I can tank maybe one more max hit from her, but after that, I'm pretty much screwed. So, okay, hopefully she doesn't get the heal off here. Okay, we killed her right before all four of those things started healing her, or else that might have been bad news. But we got it, our first try. It helps having 99 HP and some really good gear once again. But yeah, one prayer or no overhead Serene is definitely possible, even without Phoenix Necklaces and Samurai Brews. And I would even suggest not bringing those now with the Minifight Remedies being released into the game, because you don't need restores, and you're actually kind of saving inventory with just the brews and constantly brewing between your hits you still get amazing dps off so here we go song of the elves has been completed with no overhead prayers that's a lot of xp and uh but unfortunately none of that is thieving xp which is the only skill i ever need to train again on this account i need to find a way to get that this quest was only possible because i actually did making history and it got me to 200 xp from 32 prayer so we're still a perfect 31 prayer up here but we have song of the elves quest done they're bots He's trying to make himself look real, okay? He's bank fan. Yeah, he's part of their script. Yeah, psychology. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that's part of their script is they come to G and bank stand. I sold my Sanguinesti staff, bought a Dragon Hunter crossbow, and we're still in Missouri, so hopefully Dragon Slayer 2 will be easy. I don't even know how to start this quest, how to get to the Myth Guild. That shows you how much of a noob I actually am when it comes to doing normal tasks in this game. Like, I can't even walk over here. I think I have to go back to the agility shortcut and go into the F2P area, then walk west to get to the Myth Guild and start this quest. I don't even know how to start this quest, God damn it! So I've got to find Bob the Cat for this quest, and I don't trust the Quest Helper plugin here. It says he can typically be found at the Varrock Anvil or Cather B Archery Shop, and he can, but I've never been able to find him as much as I have here in the Draenor Manor. And so I'm hopping worlds over here and trying to find him without having to scout him out and run around the entire world map. I should be able to make contact here soon. There he is. I knew I'd find him. How are you doing, Bob? Good to see you again. I didn't know I'd be fighting anything this early on in the quest, but apparently there is this little piece of shit attacking me. And I didn't bring any bolts with me, so I guess we're de-picking this thing to death. A good start to the quest. I definitely know what I'm doing here, guys. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to red X him. I don't think it, I don't know if it works here. So Starfallen, my friend, typically knows nothing. He's got ZGK, otherwise known as zero game knowledge. It looks like you can red X his boss, but whenever you leave here, he probably resets. Let's see, he's probably just like Corp. Yeah, he resets HP, so I'm going to have to try and kill him before the three minute despawn of a potato on the ground, which should be possible because I'm in very good gear here. But we can lure him to the door. He still takes aggro past the barrier, which is great because it puts him in a great lure spot. And now I'm just able to, yeah, red X him, flinch him, and never take any damage. Although this does kind of give me arthritis having to click this much. Better safe than sorry, let's say. I've never done this boss in my life. I don't know how this potato has lasted this long, but it has. 
Okay, never mind. There it goes. Okay, luckily he's got one hit left and we're fine. We have a couple of manta rays in case. I didn't come into that fight prepared at all. I just tested around, running around, and finally found a way to lure him, then red X him, and wasted most of my inventory doing that. But that's an easy way to kill Robert the Strong if you ever need to without overheads. Something I've also never done is Vorkath. I heard this quest version of him is not as hard as the real one, but I'll have to do that as well because I want the upgraded Avas for the Inferno. That's another reason I'm doing this quest. I'm doing some long clicks. I think you can like Wooks walk during this phase or something. I don't know. I've literally never done Vorkath on even a normal account. I I'm a fucking noob, okay? I've never played this game normally. I think I'll be able to kill this guy first try. I probably should have brought some brews and Minifite remedies again. But we managed to do it with just manta rays, and yeah, he's the quest one though, he's much easier. When I come back here after the quest, I'll definitely switch into bruise and minifite remedy, because I think he'll be hitting a lot more on me, and I don't even have protect from magic to kind of nullify some of those hits. That means I'm going to be getting slaughtered, I would think, because that was just too easy. The quest form, I've heard, is easier, but really, how much easier can it be? I don't know, we'll find out later. You know what you're doing, Blake? You probably no, die, right? I've never looked at this one. So they, <laughs> well, there's like four phases. Uh, you want to stay in the center of the room because you'll make these bombs spawn uh, in one of his phases, and you just can't stand near them. Um, that the tiles that? Walk on shit. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, he spawns these bombs on that the ground thing? that you just can't walk towards. Yes, that thing. So my first attempt was a utter failure. Second attempt, I have a little bit more of an understanding of what's going on thanks to my friends. I don't know, let's see. What's going on? What's happening? You, you can literally uh, touch his different happens here. The wave, I think, might come. And there'll be a gap in it that you just go and stand up. It's either that or the next phase. What's happening? Okay, here's the wave, get ready. Run far away from it if you... Oh, no, that's easy. But yeah, if you want to see... He does the bomb attack too, You should run as far away as you can from it so that you have... To Does he just bomb constantly bomb? He, he, he just 3x bomb attacks in a row. Uh, I was about to say, what the fuck? It's random. Is he gonna he drain my run? Phase, actually. He should have. But... He does in the last phase. I think it's the last phase that he drains run. He'll literally just run around it. But he'll, he'll do this rock that if you get caught by it, will fucking freeze you in place, and it's like, He's gonna good chance of dying. All right, I think I have a general understanding of what's going on now. And he's just, he's already a few hits off of death. There we go, that's it. Oh my god, I only, I didn't even use six brews in that fight. That was surprisingly pretty easy. I did that second try with no real problems. That's Dragon Slayer 2 out of the way. Now I just have to go kill some Vorkath in order to get that 1 in 50 chance of the Vorkath head so I can use it on my accumulator and get that extra range strength bonus that I'll need inside the Inferno. And thankfully Jagex buffed the XP reward once again on these master quests, so there's a fat 50,000 thieving XP and agility. I could have saved a lot of time not training my agility all the way to 70, but here we are anyways. I didn't know that update was even coming. I don't really read updates or blogs very often, so luckily we did get some extra thieving XP and our grind to 70 thieving won't be as hard later on. So here we are now. We're attempting to do the real Vorkath. I'm kind of practicing my Wooks walking. While not yet in the acid phase, I have yet to do it in an actual acid phase and perfect it. And I've never once again done this boss, ever. And the first time I'm doing it, I'm doing it without Mage Protect, so I'm getting a lot more damage. But locally I can brew between almost every hit here and my Minifite Remedy is doing work where I don't have to restore as often in order to actually get some hits off. I can get about 2 kills per trip I'm thinking on Vorkath without overheads even. And that's because, once again, I'm using some great gear here, and there's our first official kill, I believe. So here we are, I'm gonna try the Wooks Walk next phase, which should be coming up, yep. Let's see, let's see it in action. So far so good, so far so good. This is very hard to, like, concentrate on, actually. Literally zero hits, that's awesome. So you can Wooks Walk even, you know, with a crossbow. I've never done that before, but it's just the, t the timing. And honestly, Vorkath is pretty fun, I'm not gonna lie. I've never done this boss, but I'm quite enjoying it. And if I'm here for the whole 50 kills, 
so be it. I think this will be a really fun experience and I'm learning something new here, so that's always great. I just got the head. I have not done many KC. I don't know exactly how many, but I almost missed it. It's the same color as everything else on the ground item plugin. Only 13 KC. I got a Vorkath head. Does that mean I'm still guaranteed one at 50? Because I might get some Slayer points and get the Slayer home while I'm at it. I don't know. I'm gonna go head down to the woman in Draenor and hopefully she can upgrade my accumulator, which once again I'm gonna need for the Inferno. Here we go, this should be a huge step in the progression of this account and an item I definitely needed. Finally, I've got the upgraded Avas and it just looks amazing with the Masori. I have some really good friends. Thank you, by the way, for helping me through some of those fights like Galvic and teaching me the ropes while in the actual fight on Discord. I totally forgot some skills to be training up besides thieving. I had to get 50 to now 60 fire making, which should be here in a second, for the Enlightened Journey Balloon to the Gnome Stronghold, which is required for Monkey Madness 2. I don't know how I missed this one, but after this, I'm going to go ahead and then go do some crafting. I'm going to cut some gems. All right, thanks to Mauler, we are ballers. That, that kind of rhymed. But anyways, yeah, I'm crafting diamonds and dragonstone by chiseling them from 60 to 70 crafting, which is the requirement for MM2. And we should be able to get this very quickly, and then we can finally get into the last master quest of the series. Now, thanks to a recent update, I have been informed that I can now go back to the island without the training, and therefore this account doesn't have the training, and it can now start Monkey Madness 2. Before, we weren't able to start Monkey Madness 2 on these accounts because King Narno, the guy you talk to to start Monkey Madness 2, his default dialogue would just go to tell me to talk to Darrow, and apparently that's no more, so hopefully I can actually start this Monkey Madness 2 quest, and we'll just have to see. Alright, moment of truth, did I get 70 crafting and 60 fire making and that balloon transport for no reason? Doesn't look like it, oh my god, you can actually start Monkey Madness 2. It is a Christmas miracle. Thank you, Jagex, for this update. My 40 defense Barrow's Gloves account can now actually go back to the island without having to use the teleport. And can now, it looks like, do Monkey Madness too. So I wouldn't be surprised if I'm like the first 40 def B Glove account with MM2 done or something stupid like that. But um, yeah, that's a real accomplishment, I know. We're gonna go do it though. And we're gonna do it without overheads, just like we've done every other Master Quest so far. Let's complete this. But first, I'm gonna force drop this translated note because it is another stackable interface. You can pair it with the normal scrawled note and it becomes three interfaces. So this is the one you can only get during the quest. You can only get one of them, but I wanna get more than one. So I'm gonna force drop to the ground, go talk to Anita again for a second one, and then come back and pick up that translated note. Normally when you die without those keys, the translated note will always disappear on death, but because it's one of my three items and I unequipped one just then to replace it, it force dropped it onto the ground in my spawn in Lumbridge. So here we go. Let's see if we can actually get a second note. I've never done this with the note. And we can. Awesome. I'm going to go pick up the one back in Lumbridge and I'll show you the use for actually using both notes together. So there's a lot of things that you can test in this game that require more than just two interfaces. The original note by itself only gives you two interfaces, but if you combine the tattered note during the quest and the other normal note, well, you can actually pull up three total interfaces and test things that might happen say after combat which kills two interfaces. I'm actually taking the agility route this time rather than the tank route because I don't have overheads and I don't have a fake log any longer. This means if I fall down I'm pretty much safe with the melees and this gear and 40 defense as long as I combo aid and tank bruise but if I get to the rangers in the area later on where I fall down all of this is for nothing. I'm also using purple sweets between some of the times I fall down in order to get my HP to full. If I fall down anywhere near those rangers they're gonna slaughter me. I've only gotten away from these things one singular time, and uh, yeah, it was a close call to say the least. Okay, we fell. I'm probably gonna die. I could have a friend or an alt come down here with range protect and gather these things up, try to not have them kill me, but uh, I wanna do this the hard way. I wanna do it on my own without having to actually bring another account down here. And honestly, after doing this for about two hours and falling and constantly dying right here again, that might not be a bad idea to bring another account down here, but um, I don't have another account that's members to be honest, so we're just going to do this the lazy way and keep dying until we finally get to the end and get the right path. I think the combo eats might have saved me, but I ran out. Combo eats are good. I should have brought those last time. And are we going to make it? Okay. We barely made that. I can't fall down again or I'm actually screwed. 
Okay, after literally over two hours, as long as I don't fall down this next trap, I think we've made it. I'm gonna uncover that secret passageway so I can get back here easily in case I need to bank or have a second attempt at the boss. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and go into Kruk. I have a Minifight Remedy on me so I can go back up to full stats. I'm going to flinch Kruk in a safe spot so he shouldn't really do any damage to me. And I do have an SGS on me because I was using the SGS spec for heals earlier. So I think I could do this. Although it might be a little bit slow. Kruk has a lot of defense. Alright, I've got him in the safe spot. Let's see how long this actually takes. Okay, even with 99 attack and strength, I've made minimal progress. I've gotten him down like a fifth of his HP bar in five minutes. I think it's going to be faster to just home teleport here and literally go buy a Fang and like five hit this NPC. Let's see how much more efficient it actually is. Okay, when I said five hit earlier, I didn't think I'd really actually kill this in almost five hits. That's my sixth hit right there. And he's almost dead. <laughs> like, this is it. This fang is insane. It's a little bit overpowered, but I dig it. Let's let's do this. Take Crux Remains. That was quicker to literally home teleport out and get a new weapon than to just sit there and, and fight the boss with the SGS. Nice. Once again, this fang is insane. I'm just flinching these NPCs. I guess I could, like, blowpipe them, but it's almost faster just flinching them with their high defense with this fang. And here will be another quest boss killed in, like, nine total hits. As I stated earlier, I no longer have a fake log, so yes, I have to run this platform legit. I have been caught a couple times. I'm not, I'm not used to having to play this game normally, okay? What can I tell you? But here we are, we're gonna get this done. Every time I get caught, I get to go back and get more gunpowder, but this is, really isn't that bad compared to the agility maze in the first part of this quest. This is nothing. So right before the glove fight, I have to kill these demonic gorillas. I have lured them into a melee flinch spot where I can melee flinch them until they switch to protect for melee. And then I'll switch to range. Once again, I'm in some very overpowered gear here. So this isn't terrible even without protection prayers on. But I do have to kind of wait around a little bit between each hit. And eventually I'll have to trade one for one with the twisted bow whenever he switches to melee protect here. And use some of my vengeance in order to kill this guy. All right, and here we are onto the final fight with Gluff. This should be pretty easy with a twisted bow. I can tick eat if I need to on the second phase. I can safe spot the first phase. And the last phase, I can trade one for one hits, kind of like I was doing with range on that demonic gorilla. So right off the bat, I got myself some purple sweets. He's for some reason wandering around in the wrong area. He should be on phase one, but he's in like phase two area of combat. So luckily this first phase I can just safe spot as you can see here and he's not going to do any damage all to me and I can easily just get him down to his second phase. Okay, it looks like he's entering his second phase. I believe there is a way to safe spot him with a long range weapon like my twisted bow. I think you have to pull him back all the way to that phase one spot I was in before. I'm going to see if I can actually reach him from here without him reaching me back. Let's just see. And nope. Okay, so he's gonna hit me and he's even gonna okay He's even gonna hit me another tile back So I'm not even gonna bother pulling him back further I think I'm just gonna tick eat his hits if I need to Venge up bastion potion up and just try and take him down to phase three as quick as possible Wow, that was like three hits. I didn't even have to tick eat at all. I was prepared though, but he's already in phase three. This gear is so overpowered. It makes everything so easy, even without overheads on. All right, already phase three, the final phase of Gluff. He does pull you in, but I believe I can trade one for one hit, if not even one for two. I think in some cases the stall will interrupt the click back and you get a second hit off because you're just auto attacking. Let's see if that's true. There's the first hit. The second it should still come in before my yellow click. There it goes. Yep. And we got two hits for one as well as a vengeance off on him. This should be very, very easy and I should have plenty of food left over. Once again, in some amazing gear, but with no overheads, these mechanics and the gear combined just makes this fight 
very, very easy. All right, this should be it, the final hit and the final master quest completed, all without overheads. Once again, this was super easy, much easier than I expected. Even with some shittier gear, I feel like this entire challenge I took on could have been almost just as easy. Every one of these master quests just didn't feel like masterful, you know? I don't even have overheads on. I feel like I could have been given like a magic longbow or even a rune crossbow for Galvik and still gotten like a one-off with the gear and inventory I had left. Okay, so this should be, yep, Monkey Madness 2 completed. Once again, I should have done this quest first and saved the agility XP for Song of the Elves. So we've completed 599s, gotten a bunch of 70 base skills, and done three master quests all in one video. But if you think I'm done already, I got a surprise for you. We are doing another elite quest. I don't know if this is technically a master quest, and I'm kind of just running into this blind. There's a couple of bosses in this quest I really haven't seen anyone do, period, much less do without overheads because I'm so ill-informed with everything in this game. But yes, this is Beneath Cursed Sands quest, the new quest that came out with Tombs of Damascus, something I also have never done. I haven't even done Raids 1, much less Raids 2 or the new Raids 3 TOA. So that'll be interesting. I need to do some TOA. That's why I'm doing this quest. I need to get, I believe it's the thread that makes my rune pouch go from three runes to four runes being held or something like that. I need as much inventory as possible for the Inferno Cape grind I'm going to be doing on this account in the future. And that's why I really need that rune pouch. Apparently I can even do zero raids and those are the easiest because no matter the raid tier, you'll always get a one in 10 chance at that rune pouch upgrade being the thread. So that's good news because there's no way in hell I could be doing like probably a 300 or whatever the numbers are. I don't even know for that upgrade with only 31 prayer. That would be very hard to do. I plan on soloing those zero raids, possibly even doing some 150s in the future and learning some raids three. Why not? I enjoyed learning Vorkath and some other things. I might as well learn what I'm doing in order to get that rune pouch upgrade. Although I don't know if that will be in this video or not. So once again, we're just going into these quest fights completely blind with some OP gear and no protection prayer. I've never seen anyone do this quest. I've never done this quest. So I'm just going to run around the room like an idiot, like a chicken with my head cut off. Basically kite this thing around the room with a blowpipe and just hope that works out. Once again, I've got some mana rays. If this doesn't work, I'll bring a minifight potion as well as more brews. I don't know. Maybe I should attack that black thing there. It looks like I should. Wow, imagine that. And he does throw some things around the floor, so maybe I should try and get away from him as much as possible. All right, it looks like we're going to manage this fight barely. We have two manta rays and like two brews left. But there we go. We killed the champion of Scabarus, whatever that thing was. And there's only one other boss I believe I'll have to kill during this quest, which should be interesting. Once again, I think I'm just going to go in blind. I do know that I need melee for that boss, though, as the quest guide says that here. Okay, here we are with the final boss fight for this quest. I'm going to be using melee only as you can see, and I'm already destroying this boss even without overheads on. And it looks like she does summon this NPC here which throws a range attack on, at me which I'm going to go ahead and kill as fast as possible. And holy shit I just took a 46 from lightning, I guess you have to move out of the way of that. Okay, don't don't judge me. My ping is terrible. I got hit by a lot of those lightning strikes. They're literally hitting me for 47s, but I still managed to do this because my gear is just so ridiculous on this account, man. It, it makes the achievement so much lamer, but I kind of like might as well use what's given to me, right? I might as well make it easier on myself because I'm going to have a hell of a time inside the inferno later on. But this is pretty much the quest completed. I can now go into TOA. I think I'm going to run in there and just see what it's all about. Have my friend guide me around the rooms and kind of inform me on what to do. But I don't think I'm going to go for solid attempts at the thread today. Middle, I think that is. Yep, middle. Fire. Fire white. White. Fire Fire white. white. Okay. Just going forward. Fire. 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 Good shit, you're nearly done. Pray for a blood fury heal. Middle. Lightning. White. Fire. White. More floor attack. 
it's all falling boulders and lightning and shit. Is it come potion? So really safe for you? No, easy. It's not normally that quick as well, so kinda. We'll get down to where you have one tile. Okay, so shout out to the bloke man for literally auditorily guiding me through what the hell I was doing. I really did not have a clue. I am doing zeros okay. It's not an amazing achievement, but I did complete a TOA technically here. We got some gold and some emeralds. <laughs> Next time maybe we'll get the thread, but for now I'm going to cut TOA off. I saw there were some really crazy people out there doing TOA 150s with 31 prayer, and I'll probably look at some of those videos that have very low views in order to help me in future attempts at getting the thread. Now, I wouldn't do any of this at all if the thread was tradable and I could just buy it out of the GE, but unfortunately that is not the case. Okay, so this video still is not yet over. We have another elite quest to do. I don't believe it's a master. I don't know what the classifications even are, to be honest, but it is a kingdom divided. That is the quest that gives me the Book of the Dead and allows me to use thralls. Thralls I 100% need for this no overhead inferno cape attempt. I'll be doing down the road so this quest has to be done and that means i gotta get 100 percent favor in every single house luckily i already have shazian and hosidius so i'm working on piscolaris next if that's how you even say it then i'm going to be working on lovakinj and lastly archaeus along with the favor i also need to do a bunch of the quests inside of zaya being practically every single quest inside of zaya so that's about five more quests i need to complete in order to just start a kingdom divided I got the Piscarilius, that's how you say it, favor earlier, and now we're working on Lovakinj. This is probably the slowest one. I'm going to be AFKing here for a long time. Luckily, there is an AFK spot here at the Volcanic Sulfur. I plan to get 65% here, then do the Forsaken Tower quest to get me 75%, then do the Minecart deliveries, which gets me 75 to 100%. Splashing the spider here and staying in the spot, I'm basically safe spotted from the fog. And I can just mine here and then wait for the volcanic sulfur to then respawn. It's quite slow, yes, but once again, more AFKable and I don't have to pay as much attention to it. We mine volcanic sulfur to 65%. We completed the minecart transport, which put us up to 90%. And now we're completing Forsaken Tower for 90 to 100%. This should be it. I also completed Queen of Thieves earlier, and I need these quests once again for a Kingdom Divided quest. They're all prereqs. The last favor I need for a Kingdom Divided quest is Arceus, and we also need the Ascent of Arceus quest, which I'm finishing up right now. I did the library to 90% favor, and this favor certificate will give me 90 to 100% Arceus favor. I still have to do the Shazian quest, as well as the Hosidius quest, because although I'm 100% favor, I never did those quests. I actually got 100% favor in those houses, or at least Shazian house, before that quest was even a thing. I have had this account for a very long time. Man, I am really getting a lot of quest points on this account by by the way, 217, we finished the Hosidius quest as well as now the Shazian one, the Tale of the Righteous. I'm going to go do the mini quest in order to get that 10k XP lamp and then we'll be set for a Kingdom Divided. Okay, that short little mini quest that you need 100% favor in all five houses for is completed. I get a free XP lamp from this. I'm going to use it on guess thieving, so I'm going to have to do less thieving for the Crystal Halberd wreck. And yeah, we're now at 63 thieving still. That 10k didn't make a big dent, but hey, it's something. Okay, so I've already skipped over a boss in this quest. It was not hard at all. It wasn't even worth mentioning. I just didn't even record it, but this thing apparently is the hardest boss, so I will see how this goes. Once again, I'm just kind of brute forcing this. I'm in Missouri. I brought some range gear as well as this Fang here. The Fang is doing work. Yeah, I was told by my friend here that he does protect magic, so good thing I didn't bring magic because that would have been completely useless. I'm going to be quite honest with you. This looks like just a poor worse version of Sarin. Okay, maybe not. What is going on? What is Why am I getting slapped by hands? Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. It stopped. Okay, well, we're still alive. I guess the trick to this is there's probably some mechanic that you don't just stand there and get slapped to death, but uh, we're just gonna brew up to pass full HP in case that happens again, because that was very scary. I probably should have brought Phoenix necklaces actually for something like that. We don't need that. We're just gonna go for it. We got the gear. Let's kill these hands and eat back up to full try and take her out with my fang we'll see how it plays out she's almost already dead oh my god 
I was oh I was just I was just chanced right there unless I tick it I don't even know so I ran out of combo eats during that hand phase that is definitely not supposed to be what you're doing in that predicament but you know what it's working somehow and I even though I was probably chanced it's still working so let's just hope we can kill her before she actually summons another one of those hand phases at me and I'm gonna take out these phantom hands with my blowpipe then switch back into melee again you know what would really suck if this was like just one phase and then she heals back up to full oh my god what no okay I, I expect that was supposed to happen <laughs> did I just predict the future I've literally never seen anyone do this boss <laughs> that was uh a very difficult fight, much more difficult than I thought it would be. My inventory is very wiped. But let's continue on, let's finish up A Kingdom Divided. Here we go baby, this is it. This is the last quest I'll ever need to complete on this account and I am so glad. I am tired of questing. We got an antique lamp. I bet you can't guess where that's going. Definitely on thieving. I wonder how much this gives though. Was it increased with the new update? Let's see. 10,000 that's it for this long ass quest that's all I get is 10,000 thieving xp another thing I need to do that I totally forgot to mention I need a mage arena 2 cape well I don't really need it but I was gonna do TOA solos and those are gonna be really hard without a cape switch so I really wanted the MA2 cape and this MA1 cape looks so newbie I'm never going to use the MA2 cape in the actual Inferno, but I will use it in TUA, and I really need that enhanced rune pouch. So I was just minding my own business, getting all these casts to 100 so I could use them outside of the arena, and then I saw a battle mage run out of the corner of my eye. I right-clicked this guy, and he's trying to skull trick me, the fucking twerp. I've got my 100 casts each on every spell, so now I'm taking on the MA2 bosses. This should not be too difficult even without overheads because I have 99 HP, 99 magic, and I'm even just using Manta Rays. I'm not even having to rely on just solely brews, and I've already taken this boss's HP down over half by using only 3 Mantas. Okay, we've killed all 3 bosses, so now I can turn my cape into a better cape, and there we go. There's the Major Arena 2 cape acquired. So, I'm 64 thieving. I need 70 plus 5 thieving. I'm going to use a stew boost in order to complete the Western Hard Province Diary. So yes, here we are, skilling again, just like we did at the beginning of this video. I'm actually doing 64 to 65 at Bandits, doing blackjacking here, then moving on to Minifight Thugs at 65 to 70. This should not take that long, but once again, I hate blackjacking so much. I even almost considered doing Pyramid Plunder just because this is so click intensive and really hurts my old man hands. Here we're coming up on 70 thieving after a few hours. I found out something halfway through this process of thieving, and that was I didn't have a full grown cat in my bank, only a kitten. So I pulled it out, got some Karambo and Genie, and took it with me here. There's still an hour and 40 minute grow timer left on it before it hits full grown cat status. But you know what? We got to do Western Province easy and medium diaries before I even hit the hards, and that requires killing a lot of chompies as well, which is going to take a lot of time, probably more than an hour and 40 minutes. But there's 70 thieving. I'm going to go ahead and start those Western Province diaries, and hopefully by the time I hit the step on the hard diary, I'll actually have that kitten grown into a cat, and then I can get a spicy stew and boost to 75, all to pickpocket a gnome. So for each of the Western Province diaries, there's a lot of repetitive tasks I have to do, the first being the novice boat of pest control for easy diaries and I have to do the med boat of pest control for medium diaries and the hard boat for hard diaries hard diaries is required for that crystal halberd and luckily I am 102 combat even without overheads I'm completely maxed at 102 combat exactly so I can get the crystal halberd and I absolutely need that for this no overhead attempt I'll be doing in the inferno as well another repetitive task I'm gonna have to do is chompy bird hunting for the easy diary, I need 30 choppy kills. Then I need 125 for the medium diary. And then lastly, 300 for the hard diary. So it's going to be a long grind of killing chompy birds as well during these Western Province diary steps. Okay, so I found a better spot for chompies I totally forgot about. But I did this not only for 30 kills, but also for 125 kills for the medium tier of Western Province diaries. I was going to go all the way to 300 kills. But I realized that really this was not necessary because if I complete medium entirely now and accept the reward, then I'll get an extra chance at 50% more chompy birds and it'll help me out in the grind later on when I do go for that 300 for the hard diary. And would you look at that, our kitten grew up barely in time. I just have a few hard tasks left to do. But here he is, ready to get me some spicy stew. I did not even know this was a hard diary step, but I have to complete Zolra, meaning I have to do a no overhead Zolra. 
I've actually done this before on my lowest level Zora attempts before I changed plans and got prayer. And I did know how to take this on, but actually I've forgotten everything I know about Zora, which makes me question if I want to learn TOA just for a rune pouch enhancement, as I'm gonna never do that again and probably forget all of the methods used inside of that raid. And that's just how I am. If I don't touch something for three years, well, I'm never going to remember it. And unfortunately, even though I've done the lowest level Zolra kill currently in the game, I don't even remember how to do Zolra with prayer, much less without prayer. So, once again, we're just gonna brute force this bad boy with Minifite Pots, Brews, some Manta Rays, and some Bastion Potions, and hope that we can kill it before we run out of inventory. Well, that was utterly disgusting, but we somehow did it with half an inventory left. This gear is too overpowered, man. It's ridiculous. I don't even have overheads. What is this game? After about 30 minutes, I've just now gotten the plus 5 stew boost to thieving, so I'm 75 over 70 thieving. I'm going to hop before every 12 seconds in order to keep that boost up if I need to. It's a very short walk from here to the gnome. But let's just make sure we actually get this pickpocket off. We got it. We completed the Western Province Diary Hard Step. So now all we have to do to claim that Crystal Halberd and make our life a lot easier inside of the Inferno is check our palm tree inside Letya, as well as finish off the kills for Chompy Bird Hunting being 300 kills total. There we go. That's 300 Chompy Birds killed. That took a little bit longer than I expected to, even with the Medium Diary completed and that extra 50% chance of spawning two Chompies. It still was kind of a struggle, and let's just say Chompy Bird Hunting isn't my favorite thing to do in this game. It's a little bit repetitive, let's be honest. But yeah, we can now claim our Crystal Halberd. The last thing we need in order to be Inferno ready and Inferno bound on this account is that thread. But that thread and TOA, I think I'm going to save for another day. Now that's because it could take me months to learn TOA from the ground up and do it properly. Or I could just be lazy, I guess, and leech it off of other people. It's only a 1 in 10 drop rate. But once again, RNG grinds don't usually do me any favors. And I could be sitting at T away for months trying to get a 1 in 10 drop, knowing my luck. Now, the actual Inferno attempts could be tomorrow. It could be months from now. I'm going to send a couple attempts every now and then whenever I get bored of my defense peer and the progress I'm doing on that account. But for the most part, I want to dedicate solely enough time to this grind. And I want to do that after I've completed my next major task on my defense peer, which I've been currently working on for eight months. Once again, because of all these grinds and how long they take, I'm going to be going dark on this channel for quite some time. So that is until I find something either new and amazing to upload or something that I'm just very proud of or or I get back to the defense pier, I get some good luck on that, or I somehow get a prayerless inferno cape that quickly. We'll just have to see what the future has in store, but thank you all again for watching today's video, and I'll catch you all the next time, whenever that is. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content.